Hey guys, welcome to Tech Wake. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Capital Bass Fishing, and I wanted to talk today about making chatterbaits. Um, I made spinnerbaits in the last couple of videos, and those are really easy to put together, uh, but chatterbaits are even easier to make. Now, I'm calling them chatterbaits, but I think they're called bladed swim jigs because chatterbait is the brand made by Z-Man, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Thunder Cricket, chatterbait, jackhammer, swim jigs, bladed swim jigs, whatever you want to call them. Let's do it. I'm just going to call them chatterbaits for the rest of this video. There are various components you need to build chatterbaits. You need a blade, a snap, a split ring, if that's the way you're going to build it, uh, the jig head, and the skirt and the trailer. So really, it's simple, and it's just pop it together, and then it works. So let's talk about some of the colors that I made and why I made those and how I came about determining that those were the colors that I wanted. So I printed some pictures off the internet of fish that typically swim in my waterways. So you're gonna be looking at crappie, uh, various types of bluegill, you've got shad and bass. And of course they eat crayfish a lot. Um, so what I wanted to do is make baits that would match up to those different fish. So the first one I made was my shad representation. And you can see this is gonna have some of the gold tones and yellow chartreuse line that's in that fish along with some blues and if you set it up next to the picture you can see that it looks very similar in color now it's not going to be photorealistic or perfectly accurate but you want to get as close as you can and this is if you're trying to match the hatch it doesn't mean you can't do other colors sometimes i just do a straight up chartreuse and that doesn't match anything but the fish still strike at it so none of these are rules they're just ideas this one's kind of like the the jackhammer fire craw and it has a red head and a bunch of red trailer, hot orange, and some pumpkin blended in there. But on this one, instead of a black blade, I went with a kind of an orange sparkly blade. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Oh, and this crawfish here, you can see next to this crayfish picture, it looks similar to a crayfish in color. You know, it's not accurate all the way. It's a little over amped in color, but it's going to work, I think, pretty well. The next one you could look at, and this one would pass for either, in my opinion, a crayfish or a bluegill. So if you look at this up next to the bluegill, it could match any variation of these bluegills pretty nicely because all of these bluegills have like a little red breasted or orange breast on them. So, um, but you could also throw this on if they were hitting a craw pattern because it does have some of the orange and it has some of the muted yellow tones and brown tones that the craws have in it. This next one, if you had to just pick one, it would probably be this color. This is going to be pumpkin green with a lot of uh, segmented and sparkly, like translucent pieces put in there in that trailer. You've got a pumpkin green, um, like a dark color with some blues and sparkles in there. And I've got a nice glitter trailer there that goes with it. And that's going to easily represent a bluegill or it could represent a crappie or it could even represent a bass. And for all intents and purposes, it could represent a crayfish too. So if you had to throw all these out and say, just pick one, I think your pumpkin green is always going to be your go-to. Um, but if you know that that's, let's say it's a fall bite and they're going to be eaten up on shad, you could grab the shad or this other one here on the right and use that as your shad representation. Or if you know it's summertime and bluegills are in the bed and bass are lurking around smacking the bluegills, you could grab one of these bluegill craw colored ones. And then the last one, I did a little pimp job on the blade. I took some reflective tape and just took a regular blade and put tape on there, which gives it, you know, just a different look. And I did this one more of a pure gold. And then I have a little fish trailer kind of buried way up in there. You can't really see it, but when it gets in the water, when I'm working this bait and the skirt is pumping and letting loose, you're going to see this bait come through. Now I probably should use a little bit bigger trailer here, but it'll work. So now let's get into the components. I'll lay them out. I'm not actually going to put you through the torture of building one because once you've seen it done, you've seen them all. And there's plenty of videos online for how to put these together. But I'll lay out the pieces, at least you know what to order and how to go about grabbing all the parts you need to make these. So when you make a chatterbait, there's only a few components that really go into making this thing. So if you look down here, I'm going to put that pen on top of that jig head so it'll stay still. You start with a clip. And that clip will go through the two holes right here in this blade. This blade has a bottom hole, which the split ring would connect into and then would connect to the head of this bait. And that literally is it. 
and then you just grab your favorite skirt that you've made or purchased and you slide that skirt on there and you end up with a finished bait. It couldn't be simpler. Um, but you can get into different colors, different skirt designs, different trailers. Sky's the limit on how you make these and how you put them together. But let me tell you, if you get on a good chatterbait bite, there's nothing better than a bladed swim jig or chatterbait and catching fish, throwing up into those weeds and trees and pulling this thing out and it's chattering along and it just gets stopped like a truck. I would encourage you guys to buy some of these parts. Once you get all this stuff together and you put the skirt, the split ring, the blade, the snap, you will end up with somewhere in the neighborhood of about $3 to $4 in cost, which is a good savings because if you go buy a chatterbait by Jackhammer, you're looking at 15 bucks. Now, one thing that's majorly different in the way that these are built and say like a jackhammer or some of these thunder crickets, if you look down here, this blade is connected to this jig head with a swivel. So there's a lot of movement that can occur in that blade that does not occur in the head. But a jackhammer is direct connected to the jig head the way they do it. And that direct connection is going to make that thing start clicking and vibrating faster. Like you cast it and as soon as you start reeling it in, it's going to vibrate. Um, and it's also going to give a different vibration characteristic and profile. So that's something to consider. I wouldn't say these are necessarily as good as a jackhammer, but you can get colors that you can't necessarily get in a jackhammer, which is kind of cool. So the only difference with these, when you're fishing them, you might have to give them a little twitch or a jerk at the beginning to get them going. And once they're rolling, they're, they're good to go. Very rewarding to make stuff and catch fish on them. You guys enjoy making these and let me know if there's any colors or questions or ideas that you have about these. That's about all I wanted to cover with this today. I wanted to just say thanks again. And if I don't see you guys, have a happy holiday and uh, good rest of the year. And hopefully I'll see you by the new year. Maybe sooner. Talk to you later. Bye.